In this video I will explain how automotive relays work and this is a common example of how one looks like. You can get this at any auto parts store for a couple dollars. A relay is basically a switch and where you would use this is where you're running high powered accessories such as um, external bulbs, external lights, uh, something that a regular toggle switch toggle switch such as this um, is unable to handle the current alone so you would hook up a relay. Now these relays um, this one is rated for 40 amps whereas compared to a toggle switch uh, can pull no more than uh, half an amp before before blowing up. Now a lot of relays have this diagram printed on it or something similar, but they pretty much represent the same thing. Um, now to clarify things, uh, I will draw it out on this piece of paper, so just for visual reference, it's a lot easier. So you see on the bottom here are different numbers and these numbers represent the different connectors on the bottom of the relay. So if you look closely, you will see these numbers printed on the bottom of the relay. So in this example, I also have a relay that I've taken apart so you can better visualize what each of these connectors do. So we'll start with um, 85 and 86. This is this part here, the coil, this um, spool of wire. What the coil is, is basically a electromagnet. And this is your trigger. And it's what tells the relay to, uh, to turn on or turn off. So when you energize your coil, the relay turns on. When you de-energize it, it turns off. Um, also, in because this is an automotive application, um, everything here is 12 volts, so your coil would be powered by a 12 volt source. Now for simplic simplicity's sake, let's take away 87A. We'll add that in later on in the video. So then that simplifies things a little bit more here. So now we're focused on pin 30 and pin 87. Now you see in this diagram that this is the mechanical switch portion of the relay. And right now, because if the relay is, or if the coil is not energized, this switch is in the off position. It, there's no connection. So in this example here, You can see right there, that's your switch. You can see it moving. Right now it's in the off position and to keep it in the off position, there is a spring right here that pulls it, um, that keeps it off until you energize your coil and in turn the coil will become a magnet. And because this is a piece of steel and it's magnetic, it will pull the switch closed and it will complete your circuit 30 and 87 will uh, will close now most commonly pin 30 you can connect this to your battery or something that's uh, a high source of uh, of power and 87 you would connect to one of your accessories. And then your accessories to the ground. So this uh, ACC is your accessory, can be your lights, can be anything. So real quick, I'll demonstrate how the coil activates the switch by connecting some power leads. Um, now this yellow wire 
or this yellow lead will be connected to my 85. This one produces 12 volts. So 85 will be this connector right here. And this would be my ground. This would complete the circuit. Actually, I should write down here ground. Now, you can switch the polarities around. They're not they're not polarity sensitive, but so just for the sake of this example, I'll put 86 as a ground. So 85, 12 volts, and ground. So you see as soon as I complete the circuit with the ground, the relay turns on the switch or completes the circuit. And this is why relays click when you energize them. So now we'll add um, a bulb or your accessory to this circuit. So what I will do is connect this end. This end would be connected to 87. Now the black wire is going to my ground, and this goes ground, it's off camera, but I guarantee you it is ground. 30 is your power, so I have 30 right, or your power right here, this is um, 12 volts. And then I'll connect my coil back up. And as soon as I energize my coil, the light bulb should turn on. Now, um, what confused me the first time when I read about relays was where do I tap? Why, uh, where do I tap these 12 volt sources from? 12 volts can come from anywhere because your 85 and 86 is a separate circuit from your 30 and your 87 connectors they can, ask, they can actually be the same source you can actually take your 12 volts from your battery and still be able to power your coil so actually I like to mention that when you're connecting your coil you can also hook up um, a remote switch to it such as a toggle switch like this these coils don't take a whole lot of current. They take at most maybe 200 milliamps, which is nothing for these types of switches. They can run 200 milliamps all day long and nothing will happen to them. Okay, that's just an ugly drawing of a switch. Now assuming that you are running 12 volt accessories, uh, most common connection would be from your battery to uh, terminal 30. Because your battery can supply a lot of current and actually it's the only device that can supply the most current in your vehicle. Now let's bring back 87A. 87A, now you see in this diagram, the switch is always connected or is turned on whenever the coil is not energized. Um, so 30 and 87A is a complete circuit. So when you power the coil, your switch will switch down to 87 and then 87A will be um, disconnected from 30. So hopefully this relay explanation isn't too confusing. Um, what I suggest you guys do is go out and buy one and just play around with it. Um, obviously if you're new to this and you don't want to fry your vehicle, just have a 12 volt source outside of the vehicle like what I do here. Um, this is just this is just coming from a computer power supply which provides 12 volts and you can play around with it and then you can see if um, you know what I said here works for you so uh, thanks for watching
Um, if you guys have any questions or comments, feel free to leave it in the comment section below or message me directly.